So we'll start with the question that's on every student's mind. Why does calculus matter? Why do we need to remember <laughs> anything we learned? Yeah, you know, and I'm actually really, really guilty of that because I was an English major and I always avoided all math. And I remember asking my math teacher in high school about that. And he gave the usual, you know, stock answers. But when you actually try and figure out where calculus is in the real world, I think that's when you start to see where it's useful. Um, I ended up going to Vegas, learning how to shoot craps, and finding out that you could actually use the calculus of probability to help devise, if not a winning strategy, because the deck <laughs> is stacked against you, at least you can lose money more slowly, and you can kind of maximize <laughs> your fun, so to speak. Um, in terms of mechanics, Newtonian mechanics, going to Disneyland, um, you can figure out, if you're riding Space Mountain, you can't see where you're going, but you can feel the acceleration. So if you could track that, you could use what you know about the acceleration to deduce which path you took um, on the roller coaster. Um, you can do this for surfing in Hawaii. You can figure out how to catch a wave. Um, and you can also do it uh, for figuring out um, how to lose weight through diet and exercise. How did you go from being an English major <laughs> to writing this book about math? Um, that's an interesting transition. Uh, I ended up becoming a science writer and specializing in physics and it's basically because I was a struggling freelance writer in New York City and it turns out that scientists need good writers to help convey their research. So I ended up working for a physics organization and they had me writing up society news and a science writer was born. I ended up learning about physics without the math sort of on the job and eventually it became clear to me that if I really wanted to be serious about this uh, then I knowing the math lends another level of understanding. I think you can understand physics concepts without math but when you know the math it's like one final missing piece clicks into place. And do you think most students understand calculus in this way with all of its practical applications and if not do you think that would help more people sort of appreciate math? Yeah, I don't think they do. I mean, I talk to a lot of people, including physicists, PhD physicists, about their mathematical experiences. And invariably, with very few exceptions, they would say, yeah, you know, I, I kind of took calculus, and even though I might have done well in it, I never really got it until I started using it, say, in physics, or if I started, when I started using it in some practical way. And I think that is a problem with how it's taught in schools. Um, I did very well in math in high school, but I didn't understand why I was doing it. I was just very good at memorizing the rules and figuring out patterns and giving, quote unquote, the right answer. But that doesn't teach you how to think. And real math, and calculus in particular, is very creative. It's about solving problems. It's a logic problem. And that's something I don't think we're teaching as well. And I don't think it's something you can learn unless you have some sort of context. Uh, the epilogue to my book is called The Mimetics of Math, and this is something I, I gleaned from my English major days. That aha moment, that critical connection, and I think you find it not just in art and literature, but you also find it in science. Um, Newton came up with the idea for calculus, for his theory of gravity, um, when he saw an apple falling from a tree and went, aha, this is that. You know, this simple thing of an apple falling in the real world actually corresponds to this abstract mathematical concept. Um, uh, Albert Einstein came up with the idea of special relativity while riding in a train and mm -hmm. making that critical connection. And I think when we look back, the topics that we really get, the, the subject matters that we excel at and really truly understand are when we make that critical connection. So the question becomes, how do you foster that in a classroom? Mm -hmm. And that is a huge challenge, um, because our educational system really isn't set up for that. It's set up a kind of factory model, and it teaches kids the basics of reading, writing, and arithmetic, and makes them good little soldiers to go out to the workforce, but it doesn't necessarily teach them how to think. Um, there's some good teachers scattered throughout there, but they're fighting an uphill battle. So can you do it? I mean, learning, real learning is a very individual thing. And how do you do that when you're an overworked, underpaid high school teacher with a class of 30 or 40 students? How do you give each of them the individual attention that they need? And I don't think there's an easy answer to that. But there are some interesting <coughs> programs that are being tried. Um, additional uh, experiences outside the classroom, learning outside the additional environment, um, math camps, science camps, going to museums, special programs um, that students can participate in. Um, things that teachers can draw on um, to help their students make those connections. 
what about those of us later in life? What should we do to keep math in mind and to sort of try for those aha moments? Yeah, I'm very, uh, very careful to say that it's not like I suddenly became a calculus whiz. <laughs> uh, I went from goo goo gaga to CJ run. Um, <laughs> Because we are adults. Because I had first thing I had to do was go back and review algebra and trigonometry and geometry. Yeah. <laughs> because I was rusty. You know? And you need all of those things to really do calculus. Um, it's hard when you're an adult to go back. You have to make time for it. Um, but it's just like learning a foreign language or learning any other kind of skill if you want to become a gourmet chef. You carve out a certain amount of time each week to focus on that. And the more you do it, the more you practice the more natural it seems and the easier it becomes. I think that we have this idea that we have to have an innate ability, um, but all we really need to do is, is care enough about it to carve out some time. And I think it's important, particularly as adults, that we don't need to become mathematical whizzes. I don't need to pass an AP calculus exam. I need to know what it is, why it's important, what the basic concepts are, and be able to solve a couple of rudimentary problems. Mm -hmm. And I think that is something that we should think of as part of our cultural heritage as human beings. Um, we're very good about you know, going to art, reading books, going to art museums, li listening to music. We tend to leave out the math, and I think that's as much a part of human accomplishment and human culture as anything.